Don Mazzella here again for Small Business Digest. You know, my one of my favorite expressions is, why does a car, uh, it's an old Carpathian Hills uh, saying, why does a horse snicker t- taking a lawyer's body to the cemetery? It's because death is the only thing a lawyer can't confuse or delay. But in this case, um, we have a lawyer who's going to t- tell us some very interesting things and a very, uh, to me, very illuminating book. Brian Felsoy, Fels, you know, I'm sorry, I'm, I blew ah, it again. Yeah. Fel, Felsoy, Fel, I hope I pronounced it correctly, is here, and uh, we're really glad to have him on the program. Brian, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. Glad to be here. Well, as we always ask, first, uh, tell us a little bit about your personal background and uh, uh, then about the book that you've written, which I, I, okay, I found. So, so basically, basically. Uh, I went to University of Pittsburgh undergrad, majored in political science with a minor in economics, and then I always had aspirations to be a lawyer. I came back to Philadelphia, born and raised outside of the suburbs of Philly, and I came back to Philly and went to Temple Law School. And I, I was one of the unique members of my class of maybe 500 uh, lawyers graduated. I had both of my parents graduated Temple Law School, too. In fact, when we had the graduation ceremony, my mom was on stage and she handed me my legal diploma. We have a great picture. Mm-hmm. So, okay. What made you decide to become a lawyer? As I don't if know. I didn't know. So, uh, my my whole life, both of my parents. I'm one of four boys, and I'm the only one who is a lawyer out of the four. I just always wanted to be a lawyer. So mm-hmm. I I just had you know aspirations that way. Seeing what my parents did. So, uh. What happened is uh, in the book, I'll fast forward a little bit, is the book is is I created a character named Ryan Coleman who tells the story. And he, like me, is he graduated from Temple Law School. And a big part of my life is my father died at a young age. So his father died in the novel at a young age as well. That's really it. He's loosely based on me. Uh, We don't really have anything else in common. But yeah, so just that that fact. And then I graduated law school in May of uh, 1994. So that was 28 years ago. And my practice, um, I guess, for about 25 plus years was doing class action lawsuits and specifically securities class action lawsuits as I kind of fell into the practice. And then I thought I really had a great story to tell. And then initially I met David Tabatsky because he was, he wrote a book with um, a person who lived in my neighborhood. I knew his sons and I contacted David and saying, Hey, I think I've got a great story to tell. And we worked initially on a memoir, but it was problematic because I'm not a celebrity. So I wanted to get a publisher. I didn't want to self-publish. And basically the publisher, no one was interested in a non-celebrity. I'm not famous. I didn't spend time in Congress or anything. So I then went to David, hey, let's change it into a novel, make up a complete story. And then that's what we did. We ran with it. So did you find a publisher? Yeah. So we have a publisher by the name of Speaking Volumes. And I signed a two book deal. It's a series. In fact, we turned in the second manuscript on October 14th. So it's been, you know, almost a month ago. And they're, they're supposed to release book two, 
which is titled In Due Time, uh, in April 2023. But they might advance it. Now, without giving anything away, book one ends with a cliffhanger. Hmm. I mean, a total cliffhanger. It would be a great television series. And right now, our publicist is shopping it to Hollywood right now, whether it's Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu. You know, it seems like every network has their own shows. Filthy Rich Lawyers would be the greatest TV series. So, okay, yeah. Now stop a minute. You you jumped ahead first. T- so you've written a nonfiction book about a fiction book about what's the title and what's it about? Okay, the title is called Filthy Rich Lawyers. Book one is the education of Ryan Coleman, but the series is Filthy Rich Lawyers. And you know what? The publisher loved the title, Filthy Rich Lawyers. Netflix had a series last summer about Jeffrey Epstein. It was called Filthy Rich, that scumbag. You know, so it's catchy. You know, we're not, you know, so I think we're kind of trying to sell the name Filthy Rich Lawyers. And then what the story is about is Ryan Coleman, who tells the story in first person, is a young, ambitious lawyer who gets into trouble over his head. And by the end, without giving anything away, he has a lot of moral dilemmas and he's questioning what he got himself into. Okay. It's a page turner, definitely, like a legal uh, thrillers are, as far as what happens to this young attorney. Well, Brian, um, let's stop here. My audience, why are you on Small Business Digest? Well, for, for my my reasoning is you you've been uh, dealing with litigation with uh, 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 securities uh, for a long time. Am I correct? Uh, can you repeat that question, please? You you've been dealing with security law security lawsuits for a long time. Correct. Right. Okay. And and you've written a book based on your experiences. You fictionalized it, but um, a lot of what what went into it, I'm sure, has to do with experience. Am I right? Yeah, and that, that's a hundred percent correct. It was all based on my experience of twenty five plus years as a securities class action lawyer. We, but and this is the big thing. It's a satire, and we tried to make it. Um, as much comedy as possible, but it's a sat- it's a satire, and yeah. everything is taken to the extreme. Uh, so. That's true, but but my audience and the reason I asked you on the program is because in our focus groups, one of the things that um, uh, uh, many of our small business people uh, are concerned about is a their investment portfolio, but b they have people coming to them and saying, why don't you um, do an IPO? Why don't you do a reverse mortgage? And every time they get involved, they get burned. So I, I'd like you. Right. That's funny. Well, here, here's the thing. People don't understand I, I, in, in the sense that they think like securities class actions are, you know, often you hear about people receive a coupon from a settlement and the lawyers receive millions of dollars. That's not the case. What this is about, there's been so much corporate fraud and greed out there. So Congress passed legislation. It was called the PSLRA, stands for Private Securities Litigation Reform Act. And it controlled how these lawsuits would be handled and basically, the lawyers are receiving a windfall. I don't. A lot of them are self-righteous. They may not see it that way, but the lawyers are getting a windfall, and the clients, the shareholders, are receiving pennies on the dollar. Yes, I I got a check the other day for a class action that went back to two, uh, 2012. It, it was for seventeen cents. <laughs> right, but but that was not a securities class action. It was a class uh, action. It was a class I'm sorry. action. Oh well, you know, um, it, it had to do with Mastercard, and and 
my 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 re, my my check re, read seventeen cents. Right, that's funny. Yeah, I hear that story all the time, and honestly, I get checks like that as well. <laughs> so you know, but what I wanted to do, and I'm I'm pretty sure I achieved that, is I wanted to give people an escape about the crazy world we live in. And I think Filthy Rich Lawyers does that. It's an extremely easy read. I modeled it after one of my favorite authors is James Patterson. I don't know if you ever read any of his books, but the chapters are really short. And that's with this book. It's an easy read. And it's everything's taken to the extreme. And what happens to the, this character, Ryan Coleman, who, by the way, he tells the story in first person. He's telling it the whole time. It's his story. And what David, my co-writer, and I did is we had we we made him what we wanted the reader to be conflicted whether they liked Coleman or not, because we felt that that would be better lasting. So I don't think the reader's gonna you know, right away root for Coleman because he's young and he just cares about the money and what he goes through. It's, it's kind of an incredible story. I have the good news is we finished book two. We turned it in uh, October 14th at the end of book two, Ryan Coleman becomes an admirable individual. He's really likable. Well, let me ask you this. You say extreme. Can you give us an example in the book of what you mean by um, uh, something that that he does that um, that you've satirized? And, well, uh, actually, what I would say, first of all, generally, we had him asking questions and it was like designed that way, whether the reader can answer the questions. And I don't know of another book that does that. So for example, Coleman doesn't say, I feel upset that I was disrespected. He asked the question, like, how should I feel about this? And let the reader kind of get involved and make the decision. So he, he it's, like it's just the well, money but, grabber. That's but that's I'm, all. I'm Brian, I'm going to um, um, bore in a little bit. Give us an example of where, uh, in the book, uh, he he reaches this point uh, 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 in a court case. So give us one, uh, one well, chapter. So I'll, I'll tell you. So to the readers, is the first three chapters of the book are a true story what happened to me that we took for the memoir. And for the memoir, the proposal, we had to have two live chapters. And basically I went down to Texas, Dallas. I was in the Northern District of Texas and I attempted to BS this federal judge. And she didn't take too kindly to it she just unmercifully ripped into me and would not accept an apology and just kept ripping into me. And that's what we borrowed that true life story. And that's the first three chapters of our book that what happens to Coleman, but is he meets one of the most successful lawyers. And what the successful lawyer said to him is, and this is how it's springboarded. It's like, kid, you've got serious balls to stand up and try to BS the judge. And that's how he was introduced to everybody from that incident in the Dallas courtroom. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that's very true. In fact, just last night I was looking at a, a, a YouTube thing about the judge in the Parkland case who really ripped into an um a public defender, you, you you're off center now. You got to move it to your right, uh, to your left. Move, move the camera because you now. That's keep going a little bit more. Well, so you know what 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 happened, and it was funny. It, the, the case it was involving Halliburton, 
and it was a political snafu because at the time, the vice president of the United States used to be the CEO of Halliburton. And the first judge recused himself. He got out of the case. He didn't want to deal with it. He claimed that he had shares of the company Halliburton, so he was conflicted. So the courtroom was about 50 people in what it, the benches in the peanut gallery in the back in the courtroom watching this whole thing on. And I, I don't know who the 50 people were, you know, media, a lot of attorneys. So, you know, I'm standing up and this judge is just ripping into me because she knew I attempted to BS her and change the settlement. And honestly, I was sweating at that point. And then at one point of her questions, I said to her, Your Honor, that's a compound question. And the courtroom, everyone behind me laughed. She said, Mr. Felgois, at least you got my name right. You can't object to my questions. And then at that point, you know, I kind of sat down and the thing could not end soon enough. <laughs> so, again, we borrowed that for what happened to Coleman in the story of the book. And then the whole time he stands up and he always, you know, he's got it with uh, it's called chutzpah. Hmm. So, Brian, Brian, you've got the book with you. The title of the book. Show it. Show our audience the book. That so the the, book, the book is to, is titled "Filthy Rich Lawyers," and then that's the series. And the first one is the education of Ryan Coleman because he this lawyer you know makes a lot of mistakes. The second book is "Filthy Rich Lawyers." in due time. Now, we have a website, filthyrichlawyers.com. If you, any one of your listeners goes to Amazon, you type in Filthy Rich Lawyers, our book comes up. And we've been out since October 5th. We have 115 reviews already. Some of the reviews are great. So people are really, kind. Of, I think, flocking to the book. It's hmm. doing really well. And I'm sure that anyone is, you know, in small business, you know, they like a legal thriller. I think they're going to enjoy Filthy Rich Lawyers. Well, you, you certainly sell your book well. Okay. But now, um, in the few minutes we have left, what would you like to leave our own? Well, I'm going to start by asking you a simple question. Uh, are you still doing litigation or have you stopped? Yeah, no, no, no. I, I love what I do. And I've been doing it 28 plus years. I have it to a point where I take it the way I want it. I, I have a practice that consists of, you know, garden variety personal injury, like auto accident cases. But I'm still am dealing in class action, which I like. And um, I do more consumer protection, not security class action. Yeah. Like a recent suit I had, this hospital was, you know, fraudulently billing all of their patients and I filed a class action against them. So I, that, you know, is really rewarding. Um, what I wanted to do is kind of pull the curtains back and give people a sense of security class action because those lawyers fly so far beneath the radar. No one knows about it. And I think I accomplished that. Well, you know, I, I had an interesting statistic. I, I get a, a magazine about the private flying that 10% of all private uh, 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 airplane bookings in, again, you, you've got to go the other way. You're out of the picture. Go to your left. Go to your left with that. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, oh so, uh, you know, and, it, it, you know, again, about the book, it, it it's definitely has a comedy edge to it. One of my friends read it and said, Brian, if this becomes a movie, maybe it would be a comedy. Mm -hmm. And then initially, 
we were on Amazon, we were in a category of dark comedies. Our book was the number one in pre-sales on Amazon. That's subject to change on an hourly basis, but that's what it was. Hmm. It definitely has a comic flavor to it. Well, on that note, I'm, I'm sorry we run out of time. Brian, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. And again, any of your listeners, filthy rich lawyers. Thank you.